uh, joining me now in, uh, in is uh, South African journalist and editor Diane Hawke. Good to see you, Diane, and thanks for your time. Now, the case has taken almost a year to get underway. What are the charges uh, that the four police officers are facing? Well, indeed, it has taken quite some time for this case to get underway. Uh, but incidentally, it seems like it's quicker than many other cases that we see here in South Africa. Um, this case is the, the main charge that the four accused are facing is a mur murder charges. Um, and these are the four policemen, Tsepisoke Kana, uh, Sidras Mosetata, Madimeja Lehodi and Victor Muhammad, whose ages range between age 27 and age 51. They're also facing a charge of defeating the ends of justice. And we're likely to hear some evidence um, in relation to uh, their uh, alleged attempts to try and conceal uh, what actually took place on that day. So who was the first witness in this case? Well, the court heard from a lady by the name of Lerato Mukwena, who is a medical uh, assistant at a medical practice that Ntumba had actually visited on the day that he was killed. Uh, now, he was actually not a student and he wasn't involved in the protest in any way. Uh, the area that he was visiting the medical practice in, however, an area called Bramfontein, is an area that is well known for having many uh, student reses. And the, the medical practice that he was visiting was is, is at a building that also houses some student accommodation. So he was coming out of this building um, uh, where he had gone to the My Clinic Healthcare Center. And it seems that as soon as he exited the building, he was shot at. The witness, Lerato Mukwena, um, said that she actually um, heard the police shots and then saw Mtobozi uh, Sindunba uh, lying on the ground. Um, and then she continued to give further ev evidence in court. Uh, the, did the court get the crux of her evidence uh, since she said uh, she witnessed uh, Ntuba being shot? She did give some some indication as to uh, what she saw shortly after the afterwards. She says she couldn't identify which of the four police officers were likely to be the shooter because they were wearing masks at the time. Um, you will recall that South Africa had just entered the COVID nineteen pan pandemic and. Uh, you know, people in South Africa were beginning to wear masks on a more regular basis. Um, and they also were wearing some riot gear, um, which made it difficult for her to identify who was the shooter. But she did say that she definitely heard shots originating from the police vehicle and soon afterwards saw Ndumba lying on the ground. She then ran back into the building to try and find um, one of the doctors who had actually um, 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 helped him earlier on and called the, the paramedics while also making sure that some of his personal possessions were actually looked after. She says that she retrieved his phone, um, the tablets that he had just received after his medical consultation consultation as well as his car keys to make sure that um, none of those things were stolen because it was quite chaotic at the time. Um, and of course a lot of the, 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 the questioning was around what exactly she saw versus what she heard from other people but she was quite clear that she saw um, you know that he appeared to be injured. She says he had blood around his eye as well as on his left upper upper side of his chest. And I'm just making sure that I get my notes correct because I don't want to give the viewers any incorrect information. So it seems that she's indicating that he was shot in the chest. And we are likely to hear other evidence that actually specifies um, where he was shot on his body from um, other medical experts who are likely to come um, in the course of the trial. Some graphic account, uh, but uh, quickly here before I let you go, what else are we likely to hear in this trial? Well, we know that there is some CCTV footage that shows um, Togazis in Dumba leaving uh, the building in question, and it shows sort of the moments surrounding his shooting. What's not clear at this stage is whether the CCTV footage actually shows the shots being fired. Um, and we understand that the NPA is likely to submit that as part of the case. Um, we also understand that the doctor who treated him is also likely to be one of the, the, the witnesses. This is a doctor who tried to save his life, but was unfortunately unsuccessful. Diane Hawker, many thanks for unpacking this for us.